Hello and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for September 7th, 2021. Uh, uh, this is the time of the week where we can get together and talk about all things CircuitPython. Um, I'm Scott and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. Uh, CircuitPython is a version of Python designed on, to run on tiny computers called mm -hmm. microcontrollers. Uh, CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them in CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the hashtag CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday, like yesterday did. Uh, if the meeting time is changed, we'll notify you via Discord. If you wish to be notified about changes to the meeting, we can add you to the at CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There's also a calendar available that we'll, we'll try to keep updated if you'd like to subscribe to that. This meeting is recorded. We record the audio from the voice channel and the video of the text channel. If you'd rather not have your voice re recorded, you are still welcome to participate through the notes doc. Uh, the video of this meeting will be posted to YouTube and the audio is released as a podcast. If you find this podcast is not available on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. There is a note stock to accompany the meeting and recording. If you wish to participate but can't make it to the meeting, you can leave hug reports and status updates for us in the document and we'll read them off during the meeting. The notes document also contains timestamps to go along with the video so you, you can use the doc to view only parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. A link to the notes document is posted in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord every week. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc. This meeting is held in five parts. Uh, the first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython Python, and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from what we're all up to. The third part is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is Status Updates. Status Updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth part is In the Weeds. In the Weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting is will go. Uh, with that, I'll get started with community news after I take my first time code. Um, so community news is a brief look at what's happening in the wide world of Python on hardware. Um, it is a preview of the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. So first up here, we have a meta note. Uh, we now have 9,000 subscribers to the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, the newsletter just hit 9,000 subscribers today. Please let folks know that the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter is free, easy to leave, no spam, and you can sign up for the weekly email at adafruitdaily.com. And you can send news to the cpnews at adafruit.com email address. And I just want to highlight that here again for this crew, uh, this crowd of people, is that um, if you have projects or CircuitPython products that you want to let people know uh, exist, the Python on Microcontrollers newsletter is uh, openly drafted every week on GitHub. So if you have stuff that you'd like 9,000 people to take a look at, um, we're happy to see and promote uh, Python on hardware. I think that's that's what the newsletter is all about. So if you have that stuff, again, uh, we just hit 9,000 subscribers, uh, largely thanks to Anne and all of the contributors. Uh, so it's a really cool place. So uh, there should be lots of reasons, 9,000 reasons to uh, participate and help with that newsletter. Okay. Next up, uh, CircuitPython 7.0. Uh, Oh, Release Candidate 1 was released. Uh, release Candidate builds mark the final testing of the CircuitPython 7 for stable release. It contains only a few issues still to be addressed for 7.0. The Python APIs it presents are not expected to change compatibility before the final 7.0 release, though they may be aug augmented. And I did not actually list everything there because it's a long, long list. 
Next up um, in news, MicroPython 1.17 was released. Uh, we have more information here. The 1.17 release of MicroPython adds support for f-strings with a few limitations compared to normal Python. f-strings are essentially syntactic sugar for the uh, string dot format call and make pretty uh, and make formatting strings a lot more convenient. Other improvements to the core runtime include pretty printing OS error when it has two arguments, an error code and a string, scheduling of keyboard interrupt on the main thread, and support for a single argument to the optimized form of stop iteration. In the machine module, a new I2S class has been added with support for the ESP32 and the STM32 ports. This provides a consistent API for transmit and receive of audio in blocking, non-blocking, and async I.O. based operation. Also, the JSON module has support for the separators argument in the dump and dump s functions, and FrameBuff now includes a way to blit between frame buffers of different formats using a palette. A new portable machine.bitstream function is also added, which can output a stream of bits with configurable timing, and is used as the basis for driving WS2812 LEDs, aka uh, I'm adding aka NeoPixels, uh, in a common way across ports. There has been some restructuring of the repository directory layout uh, with all third-party code now in the lib directory, and a new top-level directory shared has been added with the first-party code that was previously in lib moved there. The docs have seen further improvement with enhancements and additions to the RP20, RP2 ports, as at RP2 parts, as well as a new quick reference for the Zephyr port. The terms master and slave have been replaced with controller and peripheral mainly relating to I2C and SPI usage. And the U modules references have been replaced with just the module name without the U prefix, prefix to help clear up the intended usage of the modules in MicroPython. Uh, and that is the overview of MicroPython 117. Congrats to the MicroPython team. And I think it's important for us to keep track of that as well because we're uh, merging in MicroPython from time to time. So good for us to be aware of it. Next up, uh, play MP3s on the Raspberry Pi Pico with CircuitPython 7. Adafruit's Katni Rembor uh, shows how easy it is to play MP3s on a Raspberry Pi Pico via CircuitPython. Uh, there's a link there to the Hackster article about it and the Adafruit Learn Guide to match. <laughs> and it seems like this is a surprise to Katni, which is funny. Uh, okay, next up, uh, Halloween Hackfest. Join Hackaday, DigiKey, and Adafruit for a Halloween-themed contest. They want to see your crazy, creepy, ghostly, spooky, and awesome projects. If costumes are a part of are your favorite part of Halloween, then why not dress up your outfit with some hacked upgrades? You could even design a ghoulish prop to add to your home's Halloween decor or light up a jack-o'-lantern with LEDs. Whether it's technical, artistic, or just plain terrifying, Hackaday wants to see your projects. Check out the Halloween Show and Tell with Hackaday Friday, October 29th at 1 p.m. Pacific to show off your awesome projects entered in the contest. Don't forget to sh also share your projects on social media and use the hashtag HalloweenHackFest. Hackaday and DigiKey have partnered on this Halloween themed contest to offer three winners an op online shopping spree to the DigiKey warehouse. There's links there to the Hackaday. Next up, we have some Python Software Foundation news. Um, volunteer opportunities for PyCon US are available. Uh, Python 3.97 and 3.8.12 are now available. Um, and uh, in terms of security updates, there's also Python 3.7.12 and 3.6.15 uh, as available as security updates. Uh, newsletter details. The CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday, so it went out this morning. The complete archives are available at adafruit.com, adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or project, edit next week's draft on GitHub. There's a github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython dash weekly dash newsletter. Check out the drafts folder there. Uh, you can submit a pull request by editing the files in the repository with the changes. 
Uh, you may also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And again, there's 9,000. Uh, as of today, there are at least 9,000 su- subscribers to the, to the newsletter. So please let us know when, cool, when you see cool things that we need to get out to those folks. All right, and that's it for community news. Next up, we have the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. Uh, this is a statistical view of the health of the project and its subparts. It's meant to ground us in some numbers that uh, kind of we can track over time. So first up for overall, uh, we have 40 pull requests merged from 18 different authors. So pretty common for us to have those 18, which is awesome. Uh, we're growing the number of people participating and we're seeing the number of pull requests merged uh, grow accordingly. Um, I think I recognize most of these names, so I'm not going to give... Oh, well, I guess A. Van Vlack uh, is new to me, so uh, welcome to them. Thanks for contributing. Uh, We had 12 reviewers, so thank you to all of our reviewers. You make it possible to support all these authors, so thanks again. Um, Issues-wise, overall, we had 22 closed issues by 8 people and 11 opened by by 9 people. Uh, So folks are involved and we're uh, keeping up with all the issues coming in across the the wide gamut of CircuitPython. So thanks to everybody who's helping with that. Uh, Next up for the core, I'll go over some core specific numbers. Uh, Pretty big week for the core. We had, so, oh, I should say, so we're recording this on Tuesday. We normally record it on Monday, uh, but these are the numbers taken uh, from Monday. So the stats and things that have changed in the last 12, 24 hours are not included in this. They'll be included next week when we go back to a Monday meeting. Um, so for the core, uh, we had a busy week last week. We had 33 pull requests merged from 15 different authors. So lots of uh, folks involved. So thank you to everybody there. We had eight reviewers uh, for those core pull requests. So thanks to all those folks. Uh, as of yesterday, we had three open pull requests and they were... Uh, Two of them were two days old and one was one day old. So we're keeping keeping pace with pull requests. Uh, last week we hit uh, zero open pull requests, which is not something we've had for a while. So uh, good job everybody in the core uh, for keeping up with all the PRs. Issues wise, we had in the core, we had 17 closed issues by five people and three opened by three people. So we're net down 14 for a total of 406 open issues, which is also really, really good. So thank you to everybody there. Um, we have six active milestones. We have one open issue for 700. This is something we think should block a stable release. Um, so really, really good on the 700 front as well. Um, we have zero issues not assigned a milestone as of yesterday, uh, which is good as well. So overall, uh, the core stuff's really going well, and we're getting closer and closer to a 700 stable release. Uh, the first or first and second release candidates uh, candidates are out, so please test uh, 70 uh, RC1, uh, and we'll get 70 stable maybe next week. So uh, thanks to everybody for their hard work on the core. Next up, let's uh, kick it over to Katni for an update on the libraries. Thanks, Scott. Mm-hmm. So this week uh we had seven oh, this applies to all the adafruit circuit python libraries that's everything that starts with adafruit underscore circuit python underscore as well as a few extras such as the community bundle and um, our cookie cutter as well so we had seven pull requests merged from four different authors and six different reviewers uh, we, which leaves us with 56 open pull requests Uh, In terms of issues, we had four issues closed by four people and eight open by seven people, leaving us with a total of 346 open issues. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the CircuitPython side of things, or on the Python side of things, rather, um, consider going to circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, um, all the open pull requests, all of the open issues, and some library infrastructure issues. And you can, if you are looking to get started reviewing, you can take a look at the open pull requests. Um, If you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, check the code, see if anything sticks out to you. Leave a comment that says looks good. Leave a comment that says you think something should be changed. Um, And that's a great way to get started with reviewing. And once you're comfortable with that, we can look at adding you to the review team. If you're looking to contribute code, take a look at the open issues. You can search them. 
they're listed by um, which repo they're part of, but all of them are aggregated on one page. And so you can search, you know, you can do um, searches by label or you can do searches just in page to see whether any um, keywords stick out. And uh, if you've picked something that you want to work on, please leave a comment and let us know that you're working on it. Um, and we are available to provide any assistance with that, both through uh, comments on GitHub or through Discord, where we're available most of the week. Um, so there's also a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, so don't let that intimidate you. Um, and we are, again, always available to assist. So in terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had one new library, CircuitPython BLE creation, and a few library updates. Um, I didn't actually come up with an overall, but overall, uh, I know we're continuing to um, see improvements as well as uh, we finally got through all of the breaking changes, fixing all the breaking changes that we made for uh, CircuitPython 7.0. And thanks again to Foamy Guy um, and Lay Samurai Papre for all their work on getting all that stuff updated so that now all the APIs match and we're prepared for 7 stable. And that's what I've got. Awesome. Thank you, Katni. All right. Uh, next up, uh, we'll check in with Maker Melissa on Blinka. Uh, there's the unmute button. Hmm. Found it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so Blinka is our circuit Python compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had zero pull requests merged. Uh, there are currently three open pull requests, and there was one closed issue by one person and zero open by zero people, leaving a net of 61 open issues. There were 9,364 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are currently supporting 76 boards. So overall, not much activity. All right. Thanks, Melissa, for the update. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's it for the state of circuit Python libraries in Blinka. Next up, we have Hug Reports. Uh, Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you to folks. <laughs> Jeff is dropping in saying, missing the meeting doing to be, due to being a tourist. Uh, he's on vacation, <laughs> so, but he's saying hi. Uh, so Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thanks to folks uh, in our community for the work that they've been doing. I will start and we'll go around as a round robin uh, to the folks who have added their names or names and or notes to the note stock. Um, so I will take a time code and start. So I wanted to say thank you to Capolini for the register module cleanup and pending name for uh, board tip. Um, thanks to Gambler21 for the core reviews last week when Jeff and Dan were both out. And uh, thanks to Ann B for doing version numbers in the newsletter this week, because I slacked off uh, and they picked up for me. So thank you. Thank you, Ann, for doing that. And circling around, let's go to Anecdata. Uh, are you text only? I'll read it off if you don't hop in here shortly. Ah, lurking. Okay, okay. So, did I just miss that? Anic data says, uh, hug report to Naradoc for helping troubleshoot an issue with boot.py. And next up, uh, we have a group hug from Ann B. And after that, we have, uh, notes from C. Grover. C. Grover says, uh, hug report to FX Music for CO2 monitor, monitor beta testing in the German translation. And a group hug to everyone else. Next up, we have Dan. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm back from vacation. Thanks, Scott, for doing the RC releases uh, last week and fielding all the issues since you were mostly acting alone during that time uh, while Jeff and I were on vacation and Jeff is still on vacation. As you mentioned, thanks, MicroDev, for doing reviews. MicroDev tends to do them <laughs> on hours and we were asleep, so that's really great. It makes our review cycle even faster. Yep. It's terrific. And thanks to Katni for doing some audio testing on the new release, which indicates a problem with ITOS audio, which I'm debugging right now. Okay. Thanks, Dan. And next up, we have Dihirata. Hey, um, so thanks 
or hug report to Brent for all the reverse sniper troubleshooting help, even though it turned out to be pretty much all my fault in the end. Um, and then a group hug. Awesome. Thank you, Dihirata. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Thanks, Scott. Um, first up, a uh, hug out to S. Patrick W. Uh, for working on generalizing the configuration for bundles inside of Circuit. Another hug to Le Samurai Purpe for catching some additional valid types in a uh, an update I made to a doc string last week. And then a group hug to everyone. Thanks. Thanks, friendly guy. All right. Next up, uh, I assume these are notes from Jeff, because Jeff's not in the audio. So Jepler says, a hug, re hug report to Tanu for finishing some PRs while I went on vacation. Hug report to Higher Effect for getting together for dinner. Uh, nice to finally meet you. Hug report to Brent for trying to meet, and sorry it didn't work out. Uh, and a hug report to Lady Ada and PT for making me welcome in New York City. Uh, nice to meet you finally. And with that, let's go to Jerry. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, to, uh, to, to Jeff for uh, his uh, feather wing test jig guide. Uh, finally got around to making one, and it actually came out really nice. Fun project. Awesome. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, next up is Katni. All right. So this week, um, I have a hug report for the moderators on Discord for keeping up with a busy weekend while I was away. I scrolled through our mod channel and there was a lot happening. Um, so thank you to everybody for keeping up with that. Uh, hug report, more of a um, supportive hug report to Jeff for his first visit to Adafruit and for keeping me posted with some fun pictures from his trip. To Justin, who is our uh, one of our Learn devs, um, for adding support to Learn for all three bundles to the project bundlers. So now once we get um, the rest of the the other two bundle community bundle and the um, circuitpython.org or the circuitpython.org bundle um, going, uh, you'll be able to use code from all three of them in Learn, and it'll the bundler will automatically grab the libraries. Um, and a hug report to Scott for running this week's meeting for me. So greatly appreciated. Uh, my neighbor apparently appreciates it too because he's currently using a weed whacker a couple of feet from my window, <laughs> and a group hug. I can relate to that, let me tell you. Uh, thanks, Katni. All right, next up is Maker Melissa. I just wanted to give a group hug to everyone. Thanks, Melissa. And last up, we have notes from Naradoc, who says, a hug report to ask Patrick W. for more PR, PR's closing circuit issues. And a hug reports to uh, Nico7885, Skeleton022, NAD series, Easy, and others who helped with the keyboard layouts. And a uh, hug report to Neradoc for getting together a new repo for all the different keyboard layouts. That's awesome. Uh, okay. And next up, we have status updates. Status updates is a chance for us to talk a little bit about um, <laughs> a group of anti hug for weed backers and leaf blowers says Steve. Um, okay, status updates. A uh, couple minutes about what you've been working on in the past week and what you plan on doing in the coming week. It's a great way for us to keep track of who's doing what and also um, who's doing what and kind of give tips or tricks across to other people. So uh, I will start again and we'll go around just like we did last time for hug reports. Uh, so updates for me. Last week I got the release candidate out um, after some tweaks and bug fixes. Took me kind of two tries, uh, but I think I got it going. I uh, started working on partial CI runs, so this should go out today, um, which should be cool. So if you do like a, a change that's only to like pins on a single board, it'll only build that board. It won't build all of them. Um, so that should speed us uh, our, some of our, our test runs up, which would be awesome. Uh, I started some Bluetooth file transfer API tweaks uh, in the BLE file transfer library, and I'm going to finish those up and then move those to the core. So this week, I'll finish up the CI partial runs. Uh, it is a short week because it took yesterday off. We'll then finish the BLE file transfer library changes, and then the next step is bringing those changes to the C circuit by then core. Uh, the, those two changes are adding modification time support, and also uh, allowing for moves um, 
So those are the two things, kind of the things I'm working on in the next week. Circling around, uh, we have notes from Sea Grover. Uh, Sea Grover says, uh, finish the indoor air quality, Pi Badge plus SCD30 sensor. Code is compatible with a variety of boards such as Clue, Funhouse, Pi Gamer, Edge Badge, and Pi Portals. And there's a link in here to the indoor air quality repo. Uh, next, completed the CircuitPython driver for the custom DRV8830 motor controller Featherwing. The DRV8830 is a traditional single DC motor controller with a couple of twists. First, it com communicates via I squared C. Second, output speed is set by a voltage parameter. The chip does all the PO. PWM for you while you mon while monitoring the motor voltage closed loop ish could be an advantage for projects like the string car racer. The chip package is much smaller than the currently used driver as well. So there's a link to the DRV8830 Featherwing repo. Last up, designed a ruggedized portable indoor outdoor air quality monitor for my asthmatic grandson to take mm -hmm. on camping trips. It's an expanded version of the indoor CO2 monitor recently completed with the addition of a PMSA. 003i, I think, uh, 313i, <laughs> particulate sensor, larger battery, and a waterproof case. Most of the coding is done, just need to conduct some final testing. And that's it for C. Grover. Next up is Dan. Thanks. Um, so I was on vacation and um, took about a week off and did very little Adafruit stuff, just uh, answered some emails and um, putting a few comments here and there, so I had a nice relaxing time. Thanks everybody. And um, now I'm looking at an I2S audio problem that um, I thought might be blocking 700, but uh, Katni, maybe I both can talk about it at the end or after the meeting about what you think about what should be done. Uh, other than that, I have not, I've just gotten restarted again. <laughs> okay. All right, well, I'm glad, I'm glad you're on vacation, Dan. Uh, glad you're back too. <laughs> All right, next up is Diharada. Um, yeah, so last week um, I finished moving um, a lot of the circuit Python code in the Lun repo, um, renaming it to code.py for bug fly purposes. Um, and if anyone does run into a broken link for something in the Lun repo, um, please send me a message about that. Um, or you can just ping me whatever through. Slack, Discord, email, whatever. Um, yeah. Um, and then this week, I'm working on a few whippersnapper guides and also making USB. Awesome. Thanks, D. Harada. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Uh, this past week, I've been working almost exclusively in PyCharm. Uh, I used it a fair bit, but I've been kind of curtailing usage of other things to really try to nail down a group of best practices that make it uh, really nice, hopefully, to work with CircuitPython uh, so that I can share those. Uh, in the process of doing that, I found a couple places where the stubs could be improved, so I made a couple PRs for that. Um, I began working on a, a third bundle option for the cookie cutter, uh, but ran into an issue where we have a bunch of the logic in the mm -hmm. name of the directory, but directories cannot just have infinitely length names, so we can only include so much. Uh, but I think I found a workaround with the post generation hooks to make like a temporary name and then rename it after the fact. Uh, mm -hmm. But I need to do a little more testing and validation of that this week. Uh, I wrote some code for hotkeys, HID hotkeys, that runs on a Pico and it replaces the main board inside of some kinesis foot pedals that my, my, my uh, wife got, which originally they needed some very, very, very old software in order to configure, uh, which we didn't have access to. So <laughs> now it works in the 21st century. Yay. Um, we, I began a digital Etch-a-Sketch project. Uh, so it's uh, using a Pi portal and some Stemma rotary encoders, and you can uh, turn the knobs and draw with the turtle graphics. Uh, so that's pretty fun. I've been working on that this weekend. Um, this week, a couple improvements to that. I'm going to be adding some code for an accelerometer so you can shake it and clear the screen like the original. I am uh, currently actually printing the back panel, uh, so we're going to see if that fits or if that needs any adjustments. And then uh, last thing this week, I'm going to try to look into the board IDs that were recently added into boot out. I'm curious if there's a place to grab all of those uh, somehow. Uh, with an algorithm or something so that they could be used to check which 
device is plugged in in a different tool. Uh, so if anybody knows about that, uh, ping me in the Discord. I appreciate it. In That's the what I got. In, in the tools directory, there's this called like build board info or something, um, okay. and it's used to generate the JSON file that has the download information for the website. So awesome. all all the board IDs are kind of in both of those places. Okay, cool. I was just Great. in there for the CI stuff, so I think that's what you need. All right, and next up we have notes from Jeff. Jeff says, uh, likely to be seen during Ask an Engineer this week, and no other activity besides New York City tourism, I think. <laughs> so that's what Jeff's up to. And next up is Jerry. Yeah, hi. Um, so lots of outside projects, but um, we spent some time trying to get some data to understand this uh, NRO 52840 SPI uh, issue that's been baffling me and, and uh, others. So um, got a bunch of information. It's all in, in the, in the uh, issue report. But, um, you know, learned some things that really didn't make any progress on it. Um, so it's a question. I know Dan, you 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 posted that you you're, you're going to take a look at this. Um, I know you're just back, so I don't know if it's anything you want to talk about now in the weeds, or just wait till you have some time to to get familiar with the problem. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to look at it eventually. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need to talk about it today. Just uh, if you have any questions, let me know. All right. Thanks a lot, Jerry. Next up is Katney. Click on the wrong thing here. All right. Uh, so last week published the SCD 40 and 41 guide. Um, that's for the two sensors. They're basically identical. Um, one of them has a couple extra features that we did not implement, but other people within you know a week and a half of us releasing it have implemented or tried to implement. Um, so, but those work really well. Um, they're smaller than the SCD 30. Uh, and they're both true CO2 sensors. Um, so if you're looking for a STEMA CO2 sensor that is in a tinier package, uh, take a look at one of those too. Publish the MP3 playback on RP2040 guide, which was mentioned earlier. Um, that covers MP3 playback on Pico and on Macropad. Uh, started the INA219 STEMA QT rev guide update. Helps Melissa with parts of the 1.69 inch round rectangle TFT guide. Uh, started on an I2S template for CircuitPython, which was going to get added to the MP3 playback on RP2040 using Pico as the example, until I found a CircuitPython bug with audio on RP2040. Uh, this week, follow up on the bug. Once the bug is sorted out, continue the I2S template, uh, finish the INA219 Stemma QT update, start the IS31FL3741 guide. Um, I have a bunch of other guides on my list, uh, PAM 8302, the Proximity Trinky. Uh, I was told to order up a couple new parts, but they are not in stock, so i got to find out what to do about that. And then a lot of miscellaneous um, that I have on my list as well. I have a big list. It's a giant list. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's what I've got going on. You, you help keep all sorts of things moving, so thank you, Kenny. You're welcome. All right, next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. So uh, last week I finished up the code.circuitpython.org interface and uh, updates for now and made that live. Uh, I finished up a guide for the new 1.69 inch TFT and uh, I forgot to give a hug report for Katni for helping me with that. Uh, and that should hopefully be published soon. Uh, and I started looking into the Raspberry Pi TFT braincraft issues. There seems to be quite a few of them lately. Uh, this week I'm working on fixing the Raspberry Pi issues. Currently I'm working on some issues that appear to be related to the backlight not turning on, which means I need to dive into the black magic, meaning poorly documented, uh, device tree overlay stuff. Uh, and then I'm going to, after that, I can get back to e-ink guide updates. And that's it so far. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. If you find good resources for device trees, let me know. So, okay. I've been looking at those a little bit, thinking about CircuitPython on Raspberry Pi. But I think, ah. I think I realize why I don't like them so much, is that 
the files that you see have no like descriptive labels or anything in them. They're just like all symbol based identifiers. Right. Right. There's no like address equals this thing. <laughs> like, right. It's very obscure and yeah. not documented well. Yeah. It's not self documenting, I I bet there's That's true as well. I bet there's documents somewhere, or at least I hope there is. I mean, it's sort of. I mean, you can kind of uh, figure it around if you experiment a little bit. Mm -hmm. It takes some time. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, Melissa. Yeah. Uh, last up, we have notes from Naradoc, who says, Last week, finished the new release of the keyboard, keyboard layouts repo. A few new languages and a generator to automate making new ones. A uh, little circa PR to link to the board download page if there's a circa Python update. And this week, uh, PR the keyboard layout module to Adafruit HID. Uh, dig into Mac layouts and further tests, maybe PyTest and better documentation. Finish and, pub and publish a macro library, trying a syntax to make to easily mix keys, consumer controls, MIDI, and other audio maybe in a macro file. So that's it from Neurodoc. And that is it for status updates. Thank you, everybody who participated. Um, last up, uh, we have a section called In the Weeds. In the Weeds is a chance for us to do any longer form discussion that we need to talk about. Um, and today we only have one topic, so I will kick it over to Katni for the only the, the, the last topic for In the Weeds. Um, so I am testing uh, for the I2S template, which was to include MP3 playback, wave audio playback, and tone playback. Uh, I ran into issues with both tone and wave, which use um, the same concept, and MP3 playback uses something totally different. Uh, MP3 playback worked fine for me, wave and tone did not. Um, went through a lot of testing. Uh, Dan, we, we made an issue. Dan already looked into it. Um, just this is going to give you some background. Mm -hmm. um, so where we're at now is um, basically me replying to the last couple of things Dan posted. Um, first of all, I, so I was using the UDA 133.4a. Um, and uh, I wasn't using it connected to a speaker. It's got a headphone jack on it. I was using it with headphones. OK. Um, I, I, I asked about hooking it up to a speaker because I didn't have little speakers with a headphone jack, um, and was told that no, it, it doesn't, it's not meant to hook up to a speaker. So, um, I didn't go that route. Um, so w hooked up to headphones, I was getting silence and I, and I used the same board on multiple other microcontrollers with the same white well, I mean, as the same wiring as possible anyway it can't be the exact same wiring as pico obviously um and got the results that that meant that there's something going on which is that it worked on um cmd uh 51 um but the same code did not work on pico and uh, i want to say feather rp2040 i don't remember exactly what i said in the first report yeah. so what I, that's the I, that's a red herring, and I'm sorry that I. I mean, I, it was I had hooked it up. I tried a UDA, and I hadn't read the data sheet, and it was like, oh, this is just line output, and it didn't drive a speaker. Yeah. So, and then it did. Um, in some cases, it was kind of confusing to me, but I did find a problem, and I have a fix for part of the problem. Okay but there's no PR yet. However, um, when I play certain things, um, it's, it's like very noisy and crackly sometimes. It's very erratic Lovely. when it happens. <laughs> and I reproduce that same problem in 6.3.0. Okay. okay. So I, what I have is a fix that kind of gets it back to the same not great state that it was in before. Um, I think MP3s are working because, I mean, I thought it was a mono stereo thing, but I talked to Scott about it before the meeting, and we think that the stereo stuff should ha work properly because of a, a totally weird feature about how ARM chips work. 
and their memory architectures. But um, I, I'll I'll retest that some more. But it's not. If that isn't working, I'm not sure we can fix this for 700. But I can at least get it back to maybe the 630 state um, right. with the fix that I have. So uh, I'll probably go ahead and submit that PR after some more, a little more testing. Like I'll test it with MP3s. Okay, I, I brought tried all your, of that. your sine wave thing. You yep. know, basically a simple version of that, and um, or a slightly a variant on that, and it's now working, and it wasn't working before. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think as long as we can get something working, it's probably fine. Um, yeah. I mean, we we did we did RC at least with the discussion that I was part of with Scott, um, knowing that we may have to do another like even if we go stable, we may have to do another release quite quickly. Like we we knew that would be a possibility. Um, plus, like folks use stable releases more than they do. Um, unstable releases and so obviously we get more testing once we go stable inevitably like that's just yeah. a fact of life mm -hmm. um, so I think I think it's totally fine um, it's just I mean obviously I just I ran into it because trying to do this template and the other thing is um, I'm also not entirely unconvinced that there's something going on with my Pico like this was one of the first ones released. I don't know that they have they done a rev or anything since then. I don't think so. Okay, I didn't think so either, but I was was not sure. I brought another Pico with me, mm -hmm. so I can wire up a different one. <laughs> yeah. Just to make sure there's not something wonky with that one, um, because Carter did not get the same results I did, but he wasn't using the, he wasn't using the UDA. He was using the the MAX. Mm -hmm. Um. So it wasn't an identical test. So we, you know, obviously there were too many variables, um, long story short. Um, so I do have both of those now. Um, I got the, the max, whatever it is um, today. Um, so I can test with that and a speaker as well. Instead yeah, it, of just the UDA. It's, it's a little bit weird because it's a mono amplifier. So the default is that it sums the left and the right channels. So I will try, I have a, a UDA also, and I'll test it with stereo headphones or connect to, or connect it to a stereo amp or okay. something like that. Yeah. Um, we can sort it out um, after. Yeah. So what I would say is um, submit the fix, then uh, I will talk to you and find out exactly what I need, like what I need to do to test it. Like, yeah. in, in other words, like, you can tell me, like, wire up exactly this, this, and this, and try that, or whatever. Um, once you have the fix submitted, we can sort that out, and then I can do the testing for you. Okay. And I've been testing just on a feather, just because it's a little easier. But um, It's much easier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> it, it's very much easier. But the reason Pico happened is that that's what the, temp the template is going to be used with first. So okay. I'll continue to test it on Pico as well uh, as Feather. Um, yeah, we so that... if you get a different result on Pico versus Feather. For that sure. Would be very strange, but it would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, we'll we'll sort out the next steps once you get the fix submitted then. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. So I'll test. I think what I'll do is I'll test it with your MP3. If your MP3 sample program is not in the in the issue, if you just paste that in there or something. It is almost certainly not because I was only posting what didn't work, not what did. Okay. Yeah, yeah I will dig that up because it's on it's on a board or something. You, and and the file you're using if it's not copyrighted or something. Um no, I don't think it is. Okay, I have a file that I use for testing because I can't stand listening to tones all the time, but it's actually a chunk of a copyright file. So. Gotcha. <laughs> um, I don't remember what I was using. I'll have to look. Um, I, I mostly I'm interested in whether or not it's a stereo MP3 file. Yeah, I mean, and I have, I have no and, idea. Yeah, so. okay. okay. Well, you can send it to me privately. Okay, yeah. okay, sounds good. Okay. All right, great. All right. Yeah. I, think, I think we're good. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for taking that on. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, let's wrap up. Um, now that there's a truck idling outside my window. I don't know what they're doing, but they're making noise today. Um, okay, so this has been the Circuit Python Weekly for September 7th, 2021. Uh, thanks to everybody who's participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, then those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available everywhere that we know of. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter next week on Tuesday. Uh, remember, we have 9,000 plus subscribers, so if you want to participate, please do. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Uh, the next meeting will be held uh, Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Wait, let me double check. I think that's true, but I should triple check. Um, yep, next week is on Monday. So next week is usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific uh, here on the Adafruit Discord server. This meeting uh, you can join by going to the URL adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython Nisa's role on Discord. That, we hope to see you all next week. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.